Um, so Otto is an engineering manager and software architect at Global Web Index, and he will talk to us about the compression puzzle challenge, which is a coding puzzle that challenges the best programmers. And we'll look at solutions, compare notes, and hopefully be inspired to explore new technologies. And Otto, the floor is yours. Thank you. Just you can you please confirm for me that you can see my screen. So I'm all in the loop. Okay. Um, so yeah, some some thanks for introduction. Um, so I'll try to be time cautious. If this thing tries to run over the time limits, remind me and I'll try to shorten it and I'll try to skip some examples or, or whatnot. Um, thanks for coming to this uh, this presentation. Um, I'll try to present uh, a project that I've been working on with uh, with my friends for a while. Um, it's called Compression Puzzle, and it started as a as a um, in office joke, and it escalated to quite uh, extensive proportions. Um, when I was thinking about how should I present this and what should be the focus and the main theme of this 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 puzzle and, and how should we go about it, um, I realized that uh, perhaps like traditional coding puzzles or traditional coding golf either focuses on the shortest solution or the fastest solution or some other aspects of, of what would make one's solution great. Um, but in this case, I try to find not just like the best solutions and, and the given space for the given task, but also like um, visually the most appealing, technically the most uh, sophisticated, the best looking aesthetical, aesthetically um, um, based solutions. And um, my talk today will revolve around these themes. And um, I'm going to start with a quote from Edgar Degas. And uh, the quote goes, art is not what you see, but what uh, you make others see. And this theme is going to be common through my presentation. So I'll introduce you a bit to, to this, this artist. So he was uh, a very famous artist, or is a very famous artist from French. Um, and he was really famous because of his portraits uh, and pictures of uh, dancers. So around 50% of his uh, pictures were actually dancers, uh, ballet dancers trying to learn the craft of, of actually dancing. And um, although he was, he is kind of like an impressionist, um, he didn't want to be known as impressionist. He said that he is realist. Um, and um, I see there is a lot of common themes between the, the authors of, of the challenges that you're going to see today and uh, what this guy did. And I think these things are very connected. So I'll try to, to follow that common theme. Um, and yeah, uh, his paintings, if you ever seen it, uh, they look like this. So you have where dancers in different poses. They're trying they're to do their best. They're trying to learn the craft. They're trying to really excel at what do they do and they're trying to train together learn from each other and they just try to be the best at what do they do um so i'll talk a bit more about the challenge itself um so the story goes like this i have a friend uh, called david uh, and he brought this um programming puzzle to to, to our co-working space and uh, he just wanted to see what different solutions he might get out of us um, just on a slack and uh, that escalated uh, we started with two solutions three solutions and then at some point he had like a good taste of what's what's possible with the, the solution and then we scaled that up to 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 make it like an open source project and we you know we defined rules and we defined the ci pipelines for this and it really exploded from there um, but the essence is this. Um, so it's it's a programming puzzle. You get an input string, uh, as you see it here, and uh, the programmer needs to write uh, a function or a program or an expression uh, that will give you kind of like a compressed version of this problem. So like if you are a beginner programmer, if you're an intermediate programmer, or if you're like a expert programmer that works for Google, you can kind of like grasp the idea quickly and you can really, um, you can really write um, your different solutions for this problem. And just by 
by being an engineer and being on this meetup, you probably already know how to approach this problem and you might have very different uh, approach, but you'll still, um, you'll still be able to crack this, this challenge. And after you crack this challenge, the natural progression from there is to how can I make it better? How can I make it more elegant? How can I make it um, shorter? How can I make it more performant, etc.? But usually, like if you're if you're a programmer, if you're a programmer in profession, you'll you'll surely understand um, understand the problem well enough. And uh, yeah, like I said, this started in uh, as a joke. Uh, it just started in uh, like a local local environment with English friends. I then invited people from my wider network, and from there on, it kind of like uh, got interesting uh, within these networks, and it really expanded. So uh, a lot of very experienced uh, people have uh, tried to do their best to to solve this. Um, but yeah, in essence, uh, I want to show you how far you can go with a simple idea if you start collaborating with people um yeah just to warm up given that this is a python meetup i'll, sh I'll start with python examples and this is for example something that you know somebody that's learning python or somebody that's using python in production and it's not like an expert or whatever would re reasonably understand and would you know would be easy would be easy to grasp for him so um you have a loop you look through a character, through a, through a set of characters. Then you have some additional counter that tries to count uh, at, uh, at which position the character is appearing. Then it tries to uh, mutate some state somewhere. And then in the end, it tries to combine this array into um, a final output. Nothing fancy, um, although you might not currently be working on implementation, you understand that there is like a loop. And this loop has to do some something within uh, within the iterations that 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 happen. Uh, nothing fancy. Again, if you would saw this uh, code uh, within your Python project, you would immediately understand what what's happening. And then, if you have if you have loops, uh, you can then make your code better with another level of, of complexity. Um, by introducing recursion. So this is an example written by, 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 by Brodo. Uh, you can see that this function uses uh, recursion and it still uses mutation of the data while the recursion is happening. Um, and it also uses um, Python's function for unpacking uh, array into a head and the rest. So again, a bit more sophisticated example. And the author here also tried to um, convey what's happening through the comments, which is also very useful if you're trying to follow somebody's, somebody's thought. And from there, it can become a bit more sophisticated. So if you have recursion, um, you can optimize that recursion uh, with, uh, in a special way, in a way that's called tail recursion, where the, the last thing that the function returns is actually a call to another function. So you can see here that Luca's example, um, this is now being introduced. And, um, and again, it's, a, it's the same solution. It will output the exact same uh, thing that it needs to, but it's a, just another step um, away from the, the basic example. Now, um, we saw like basic Python that, that will do the job and it's nothing wrong with it. Um, but then, things could become easier or better if you try to introduce more stuff from your standard libraries or you start introducing more complex things. Um, just given that you need to have a set of rules when you try to do challenges like this, we said that the only constraint is that you need to use the language, whatever the language is, and the standard library that comes with the language. So no external libraries are allowed when, when, you, when you write these, these examples. And in this case, you have two examples. One is using a group by that is, that's part of intertools in, in standard Python's library. And the other example underneath it, it's a very famous uh, example where the user, the, the, the programmer is using Python's list comprehensions, which are very powerful um, set of tools when you're doing with collections or, or arrays. Both of these solutions, again, return the same thing. Um, the, the 
the four comprehension example might actually be a bit faster, um, but yeah. And um, yeah, when when you try to like come up with these solutions on your own, you're kind of like you're bound by the knowledge that you have. But once you start to collaborate with other people, you can also start learning from them. And this is an example that uh, Urban Skudnik submitted. And he saw some of the examples that you guys saw, and he thought that he can improve them. And here you can see two Python solutions, one iterative and one recursive. In the recursive, in the iterative um, example, um, he took the, he started using uh, Python stake while function with, with Lambda expression, just so that that it kind of like becomes a bit more sustainable and, and, and easy to read. Um, again, a very powerful solution here indeed. Um, so yeah, we can go further with Python solutions. So this is another Python solution here um, that uses uh, that uses lambda functions, uh, expression, and in this given example, um, the author also tried to cheat a bit. And instead of writing all this logic of, of trying to break uh, break the string apart, uh, he wrote uh, a regular expression with uh, look behind. Um, when this example came uh, in a discussion, we started uh, discussions that this is perhaps, you know, on the, should be taught as a, um, not as a cheating, but kind of like not really the, the right approach when you try to, to come up with a sustainable code or whatever, but still like trying to mix different things when you're trying to create something interesting. Uh, it's, it's an option when you're an engineer and you can see that um, regular expressions can also make a really beautiful solution. Now, um, if I go back to, 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 to Edgar, um, he was master of, of oil paintings and chalk. Uh, but he also did sculptures. So this is one of the examples of his, uh, his dancer sculpture. And um, if he was able to trans transcend this, uh, the, his, his original tools, um, it's also interesting to extend this, this puzzle to other languages, right? So we, we can do more. And the first, language that that you know you should know if you're in, in web development is, is javascript so here you have uh, two examples from david lichen um both of them are written in, in modern javascript and you can see that on the left example he's using uh, for each function and then he learned that it's possible to write this with uh, with more sophisticated function and he introduced reduce redu reduce function as well so and that kind of like made his solution a bit more elegant as well and you can you can start appreciating different approaches and you can also learn that if people are really masters of their craft they can really uh, pull together really sophisticated functions or mechanisms that the language uh, offers and they can come up with really uh, nice solutions so this is a solution from Clement Kugoshek it uses very modern JavaScript, and you can see this, for example, three dot notation, uh, which expands the string into an array of, of characters. And you can also see that, for example, he's not using um, if, if functions anymore. Uh, he's using so-called ternary operator, um, uh, which, which is essentially kind of like better way of expressing uh, if statements. So no, no loops as per definition and no if statements are present in this JavaScript solution. And you can take it even further. So if you, if you spend more time with regular expressions, if you start to learn more of this like modern way of, of how regular expressions work, you can make even shorter, uh, uh, shorter solutions for this. So this is a solution for um, Luca Prebil. Um, and yeah, it uses regular expression, and you can see that the author really went for minimalism here as well. Um, and yeah, now you saw that, that, that we have like Python and JavaScript, and we have different authors trying to, to compete, they're trying to, to do our best, they're learning from each other. So the next obvious thing would be how, to, how can we expand this game even further, right? So, yeah, well, the obvious thing would be to, to, to introduce more languages, right? 
So here you have uh, two Go examples. One is from Pete Petrich, another is from David Kurija. Um, the one on the both examples kind of like feel the same, but since Go doesn't have like these high level functions, you need to use loops. Uh, you still can use ranges. Um, and it uses, for example, this rune, which is a very, a very Go specific thing that, that you can use within Go. Um, and these examples, for example, might be, you know, faster in Python's examples, uh, given that the, the author, authors choose to use Go as, as the, the language. Um, yeah, perhaps the bit back, before we go into more extremes, we can appreciate a bit uh, um, kind of like traditional languages. So on the left side, you have um, Nate Stutz's solution in, uh, in C Sharp. So a modern C sharp uh, that uses uh, link queue library, which is kind of like embedded language within uh, C sharp to do like very nice uh, computations on top of data. So you can see that you have aggregation, you have uh, selection. So functions that you might know from languages such as SQL that are, that are getting introduced into the code base. And on the right hand, you have um, solution taken from from Alex Justin and, and Peter Levert. Uh, these two examples are written in Java. Um, they're taken out of bigger context. These guys also experimented with parallelization and, and trying to do this computation really fast. Um, if you're curious, I'll provide more information. But again, you can appreciate that these authors, for example, didn't really optimize for the aesthetics, but they optimized for performance and parallelism and trying to crack that, that aspect of, of this challenge. Um, so now we see that like more and more elegant or interesting solutions try to emerge if, if you try to just like play along. And uh, I'll introduce now like collection of examples that I called it uh, that they're like purist um, because like their solutions are very, um, very pure. So they use, you know, functional languages. They try to use pattern matching. They try to use um, very sophisticated techniques to really crack the problem in, in its essence. Um, so for example, here is a Haskell solution from Marek Ficus. Um, if you've never seen Haskell, this is how Haskell looks. Uh, and for example, this, this uh, operator in the bottom, just like, <clears throat> if you've never seen it, it's called bind operator. Um, and you can see that, uh, yeah, you see some elements like folding, which is, you can think of it like a reduce. Um, and you can see that the author here still uses some um, expressions and uh, um, some elements might be familiar for you to you even if you don't know uh, any Haskell but again you, you can appreciate the, the, the elegance of Haskell um, yeah there are some new players that for example try to play it safe when it comes to memory uh, so this is for example a solution in Rust written by Simon Slender um, interesting thing uh, that, that this solution um, shows is that, for example, you have the speakable function, which allows you to look um, the, the next character within the iteration, and that kind of like simplifies the whole thing even more. Uh, you can see this next if equal operator, uh, again, that can make all the whole, the whole thing even, even nicer in, in essence. Um, again, this might be, for example, very, very performant, very, very type safe and, and, and everything uh, solution. Uh, following Puris, uh, this is a solution written in, in modern Scala language. Uh, this is a solution I wrote. Uh, it uses pattern matching to uh, expand the, 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 the current uh, sequence of characters. And then um, it uses some other techniques to bring this, this whole collection back together. But again, you can see you know, things are happening and within this solution. Now, um, now that we're dancing and we see like these solutions, but you're like, you know, these are crazy solutions. I, there's no way that I, if I saw these solutions in, in my code base that I'll be able to, to understand them or even maintain them. So I guess we should focus more on the elegance or, or like 
making sure that solutions are, are like understandable and, and easy to grasp. So I'll, I'll show a bit more the elegant side of, of these solutions. So this is a solution, for example, written in Ruby. Um, and you can see that given that Ruby is like very verbose language has extremely powerful standard library uh, and it has very good support for dealing with uh, arrays or collections. You can see that again, Christoph, uh, Christoph's solution here, it's very elegant, very maintainable. And, and you can, if you read it out loud, you can understand what's going on and, you know, one of the mantra of, of, of Ruby is that if you can read the, the whole um, expression out loud, then you should be able to figure it out. And I think this, this, this expression demonstrates that. Um, one interesting point here uh, with this, this function or this, this example is that, that underscore one, that would mean that the first attribute that that map function gets, you can use it. You can see the same example, for example, in modern Swift language. I think there, this is called numerated parameters. Um, and yeah, this is another example um, that Roman built. Uh, this is a solution that uses R. Um, you can see that, again, it's very simple, very easy to, to grasp, and you can instantly get the idea what, what's happening. Um, Although I don't understand this identical uh, stop if not, but yeah, I guess if, if, if the function does what it says in England, it should be good. Um, yeah, uh, people started to use more of their tools. They, they, they started to use this very uniqueness that languages bring. So in, 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 in this Elixir solution here, you can see that compress function is defined four times. And essentially in Elixir, you can do this like very smart method overloading where you have different functions defined in this way. Again, a very interesting approach that can only be implemented in, in Elixir, for example. Um, then you have other kind of like um, branch of languages. So in this case, you have a solution that's been submitted by, by Simon, uh, Simon Black. So you can see closure. Uh, here you'll see functions like transduce, partition by, map cat, et cetera. So, and a lot of brackets, obviously, since it's closure. But again, you can see that it's, it's kind of like in line. If you know closure, you'll instantly understand it. Um, then you have other languages that are very popular. So this is, for example, Milan solution in Lua. And uh, then you get to even more esoteric languages at some point. So this is, for example, another solution um, uh, written by Hai and Boris. Uh, and this solution is written in um, programming the language called RED, which is this the, 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 pro, uh, the, the next language after Rebel. Um, so again, it's, it should feel similar to Ruby, so it should be expressive and it should, you should be able to figure out what's happening if, if, you're, if you're familiar with this language. But again, you can see that it's a one expression, one line and does the whole job. Um, okay, now, so we are now dancing, things are getting really excited and uh, yeah, we understand what, what's going on. So it's try, now time to go even further and even beyond uh, what, what we currently saw. And I'll show you this example. So this is an example written by Jan Kumetelko. Uh, this example is implemented in programming language called Rai. Rai is a new programming language that's, uh, that's developed and it's being developed by Janko himself. He wrote this example uh, in his own language um, based on some examples that, that he saw in, uh, implemented in other languages. Uh, but yeah, spe specifically in this, this language is his building. And um, because he was like tracking the progress of how other solutions were being made, how other languages uh, evolved, their, uh, their, uh, how other authors evolved their solutions by invoking like these super functions that, that other more powerful languages or high level languages have. You then decide that, that, well, it would be interesting if my language would, for example, support high order functions. So he went back to his programming language called Rai and he extended his programming language so that he could implement this solution that you see now on your screen, which is, uh, for example, compress B and compress C. 
these functions were added to his programming language so that he could solve the solution in a way that he wanted to solve it. So now we're like really going beyond beyond. Um, yeah, kudos to, to Yanko on this. And uh, not stopping there, uh, SQL is also a programming language, so fourth, lang fourth generation of programming language. Here you have two solutions, one done by, by Nazi Stutz and another done by, uh, by Yanko Metelko. Uh, both of these solutions uh, are implemented uh, in, in SQL. One is in my, my, Microsoft SQL language and the other is in SQL Lite. So again, if you would run this example, you would, you would see that um, I'm seeing some comments. Yes, there is a solution in C++ also already. Okay, I'll talk about numbers here a bit. So again, the, the whole concept of this idea or this project was to have fun, to, to explore what's possible with this language, to challenge different programmers, to, to challenge the really best programmers that, 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 that I know or could be reached. Um, but like, there are attempts, for example, to benchmark these solutions. So there's like a benchmark suite that benchmarks just Python solutions. Uh, some authors decided to, 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 to really go to extreme. So you'll find benchmarks, but there is no benchmark that would you know, go through all the solutions and just point out what, which solution is the best. Um, and again, we were trying to, it should be like a learning experience and people really learned a lot. Uh, by submitting this thing, by playing along. And uh, I think like, again, we're really trying to, to, to see like how elegant solutions could be made. Um, but still, I have some of the numbers here. Um, so currently to this day, 34, 34 authors have participated in this challenge from different countries. Um, there are currently three open pull requests that I still need to merge and, and review. Um, there is now 86 solutions. So this is like number of, this number might be even higher than 86 because some solutions are implemented in wild file. Um, so there's, but yeah, around 70 solutions and 27 different programming languages. Um, so um, yeah, I think we cover most of like modern programming languages. Um, there's also a collection of languages that I would like to see um, that has not, and, uh, but yeah, this, this, this has evolved. And uh, again, I'm, I'm, if you are appealed by this challenge, if you want to submit your challenge, if you want to compete with this stuff, please make sure that, uh, yeah, join and join in and, and learn from it. Um, and yeah, so this is my last slide. I made a QR code. So if you want to scan it up and look it up in your, your phone, you can, you can get to the GitHub repository and you can see all the solutions. Uh, the link is also there. So if you, if you just follow the link, you'll also get there. Um, yeah, there is on GitHub repository, you'll see this like basic rules that you should have fun, that you should challenge yourself and you should, uh, you should submit as many solutions as you want. Um, then you're not bound by the language. Although I needed to then make this rule, rule. Um, I tried to run this, these examples on a, CI, uh, on a CI server. So everything is run through Nix and, and make file. Uh, so I encourage authors to also uh, use that, that framework to, to test. Um, there are also now two blog posts written about this stuff. So if you really wanna go into details about how some elements are implemented, so how, how, how certain things work, uh, comparison of these things in quite detail. Uh, you can go to this epic blog, my blog, and you'll find this, this article that describes all these solutions in, in some detail. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's essentially it. <sighs> Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have the Python solutions benchmark numbers? Handy. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do have them. Uh, so, so I think I can just find them. I think it should work. Uh, so yeah, you have some examples here. Uh, you can see that this the solution that that brother wrote. So not your solution, but solution that was presented after yours. 
that was that was based on this benchmark was the fastest. Um, for example, yes. Okay, so the the least comprehension was not the fastest, because that uh, you would no the yeah. I would encourage you guys to just go to, to the repository. There's like a benchmark. You can run this thing yourself. Uh, and yeah, everything is written there. I'll open the repository just to have some background. So actually, this comprehension was the fastest. I don't think this yeah. is sorted. Yeah, 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 yeah. The list comprehension solution is the fastest uh, within those examples. Correct. So the one that uses Groovy. Okay, so which is understandable. It's really fun to see the um, like diversity of the Python solutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Python, Python solutions. Of them. Yeah, and they're really like, you know, none of the none of them are really similar to each other. I think they're actually, um, yeah. There's actual like diversity, and uh, it really showcases the different features. And the more functional approach and we even have like i think we had two or three different types of uses of recursion and stuff and that was really really fun to see yeah that's that's the aim of this although it might sound like a silly silly thing it, it's really like it showed that like if you have like a simple idea and you try to at least put some rules around this idea and if you try to just push it just a bit then you know uh interesting things happen and this is one of those examples and again uh um yeah almost 40 people have submitted their solutions and uh, that's more 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 people than they are currently on this call just like uh, so yeah um, no yeah i think i can speak for everyone that it was this was really fun to listen to. Thank you. Uh, Basically, it's like a commercial. I think it's like almost like a commercial for Python because, yeah, it <laughs> Python has nine solutions and the other languages have like three at most. So that's really mm -hmm. saying something about it as a language. I mean, okay, we can start like this whole discussion of how it's not opinionated enough or whatever, but I, I will mm -hmm. I will take it as a commercial yeah i mean there is uh there is a lot of solutions here i couldn't for the because the time bound i couldn't present everything but you have solutions in f sharp you have solutions in dotnet you have solutions in java and you know when you're running these things in production environment uh then um you know jvms or dotnet all these things would need to be warmed up then to you know these are like these are like very synthetic examples then so it's not really fair to compare them to each other um so again i i just wanted to show like how different approaches and functions how they, how this all shows and how like this like beauty comes uh, in different shapes and forms and that, that should be the main thing uh there are some questions about uh um about uh, how do we benchmark so for python there is the script here benchmarks.py it uses uh, time it and it uses this this time it time it and then it runs it this yeah i'm not like expert but i think it does <laughs> yeah ten thousand times uh, um, and that does it there's also benchmarks for example for uh, for F sharp, um, that the author really benchmarked it against. You can see hundred thousand uh, solutions, and yeah, uh, you can yeah. The game of benchmarking is is game game on its own, um, and yeah, currently nobody was brave enough that would benchmark every solution <laughs> in existence. Uh, yeah, you also need to understand that some of these languages require compilation. Some of these languages can be interpreted. Some of these languages uh, have runtime environments, etc. So, uh, yeah, it's not fair to just compare them to each other directly. Yeah, that's cool. That's point. We need a smart contract solution. Yeah, I'm waiting for Yuri to submit his uh, smart contract solution for this in Solidity. Or <laughs> We're still accepting pull requests. So, Yuri, if you're brave enough, Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, submit your own solution if you're brave enough. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, there's there's one. Uh, okay. Okay. Can it be done with C preprocessors? Uh, I mean, go for it. Probably, I don't know. There is solution in C, uh, submitted by one really good engineer. Uh, yeah, it's here. <laughs> Something like this. Don't don't ask me to explain it. I'm, I'm not that that good in C. But yeah, the, apparently this stuff works. Uh, yeah, there are some questions like um, you know um, uh, people are like um, asking, for example, how should should they also implement decompression? Uh, how should this uh, algorithm work if there is like uh, 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 if it's a short string or it's a really long string, should like how how would all this work? And and uh, yeah, there's a lot of edge cases and and uh, um, yeah, just try to do like have fun. I guess that's that, that's the main thing here. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, Yuri is also wondering if he can do it in CSS. And that that sounds like a Nice challenge as well. Um, if you have a way of, of, of if you have like way of calling something either via in, in a loop or recursion, and you have some way of accumulating things, then yeah, then probably it could be done in CSS. Uh, although I cannot visually imagine how would that look like. Uh, but yeah, I would really like to see exam this stuff being implemented in, in assembler, for example. So assembly language, that would be interesting. Uh, it would also be nice to see this implemented in some esoteric language like, I don't know, BrainFuck or, or you know, these, these really obscure languages. Um, but yeah, if you, or, or Fortran or Cobol or, you know, one of these like languages that it's hard to find, <laughs> hard to find engineers. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so if there's anyone who'd like to submit one of those obscure solutions, uh, go ahead. Otto will be very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Um, and thank you very much. Um, here's the blog okay. post and it has like blog more post. stuff to <laughs> Okay, yeah, check out the blog post and the uh, GitHub repo.